Hi everyone, a very happy new year to all of you. Uh, this year I have not posted a video yet. So I thought I will start off my set of videos for this year with this topic. As some of you might be aware, uh, I finished my PhD uh, last year towards the end of 2022, I mean the year before the last. And I started working as a research and development engineer at EMEC or Inter University Microelectronics Center here in Belgium. Uh, I'm completing almost an year now. And uh, I have, have been part of a few discussions lately about uh, a usual question, uh, what are the career options after a PhD? So I thought I will cover my ideas about it today as my first video of the year. So today uh, I'll try to keep it as short and crisp as possible because generally I tend to wander off into different discussions. So I'm, I'll try to stick to a topic. So today I'll cover what are the broad career options that somebody has as they finish a PhD. Here I am restricting myself to a PhD in science, technology and engineering. And also I will briefly touch upon whether really those career opportunities do need a PhD or not. That's another question that I'm often and I, that I often encounter with my discussions with people. Some ask, okay, you're doing this, but do you really need, need a PhD for it? So that might even need a separate discussion, but let me see if I can cover that as well. So uh, to start off, conventionally, traditionally, even 10 years ago, uh, if, you, if you tell somebody that you're doing a PhD, the obvious thought that comes to their mind as a career would be that, okay, you want to be a professor. You want to go into teaching, you want to go into research, you basically want to go into an academic job. By and large, that's broadly the society's or the community's idea of why somebody would pursue a PhD. However, the fields have opened up and uh, different uh, industries or I, I can say career, reach, career, career spectrums have opened up to people with PhDs. So I can broadly classify uh, opportunities for people with PhD in two categories. One is the academic jobs, as you would be aware, and non-academic jobs. So within academic jobs, uh, there are two aspects to it. One is obviously faculty positions, but postdoctorals, which is what most a majority of people kind of do after a PhD, also fall within this branch of academic career uh, space. So postdoc is kind of considered as an interim uh, period before you get into a full-time faculty position. So postdocs give you a bit more freedom and a bit more independence to pursue your own uh, idea of research and for you to get that breathing space to form your mind and your ideas about what you want to do as your, as your independent research career. So people finish PhDs and go for postdocs either in India or abroad in the US, Europe, anywhere. Find great labs which work on specific uh, themes that they are interested in get some experience of two, three years. And then if they are again, if they still have the motivation or the interest to pursue an academic job, they apply for a faculty position. So the, uh, then the next option is obviously faculty positions. The details about that I will cover in a separate video because that's a behemoth in itself. Then within this academic space itself, there's a very interesting new set of jobs that are coming up, which is not really a faculty position, but it's more of an academic managerial position, such as grant managers, lab managers, uh, portfolio managers, patent managers, etc. So what is happening is that there is a big drive in academic institutions in India and across the world to improve the research output, the innovation output, the patent output of organizations or the academic institutions. For this, they actually need dedicated manpower with trained expertise, like somebody with a PhD to take care of these aspects. So that's where these new uh, avenues have popped up. Grant managers, what they do is they basically uh, curate the set of grants that are available across the world for faculties to apply for, for pursuing their research. Then they understand what is the requirement for the grant, how to prepare the proposal, etc. They serve as a liaison between the faculty and the institute before the grant finally gets to the submission phase to the granting agency. Likewise, there are lab managers when uh, when there are institutions which have centralized facilities like nanoscience facility, nanofabrication facility, maybe a BSL-3, biosafety level 3, infectious disease research facility. For that, you need dedicated people, trained people, with doctorates, PhDs to take care of these lab facilities. So there are lab managers, there are grant managers. Likewise, all the research that is coming out of an academic institution needs to be protected. 
many of it needs to be patented that kind of helps build the research portfolio of the institution that also requires dedicated manpower for that they have patent offices academic institutions have patent offices so they need patent portfolio managers so they kind of understand what different faculties or research groups are doing in the institution then they uh, try to motivate and nurture this ecosystem of patent filing and ip protection so you they, that, these are people who kind of get themselves trained one level above their phd into patent management patent acts wipo world intellectual property organization certifications etc that you can do it's an in interesting space so these are broadly the i even wrote them down so that i can cover everything so these are broadly the academic verticals postdoc it is something like an interim or a uh, ad hoc academic uh, space then permanent positions are faculty positions and these new niche uh, profiles that are like lab manager grant manager patent portfolio managers now coming to non academic jobs one thing that obviously comes to your mind is industry jobs that's like you work as an r&d engineer you work as a process engineer you work as a scientist uh, you work as a researcher for example you work as a scientist in a pharma company you work as a scientist in a medical device company let's say philips siemens g healthcare you work as a process engineer let's say for the micron facility that is coming up in gujarat you work as a h uh, h profile engineer for let's say global foundries tsmc there are a lot of i am talking from the nano fabrication space where i have my expertise so these are all industry positions then you have in india specifically there are a lot of scientist positions in the ministry like the scientist at the, at the ministry of electronics and information technology maiti the scientist at dst departments of science and technology scientist at dbt biotechnology then scientist at birac biotechnology industry research assistance council so these are all lot of administrative these are all heavily administration oriented so their main role is to coordinate all the grants that the government offers to the academic institutions uh receive the proposals from academic institutions review them uh, institute a panel of experts to get these proposals reviewed then select the good uh, proposals grant the fund allocation then managing the fund allocation reviewing progress every year getting the progress reports from the principal investigators then taking care of the project closure and also promoting this ecosystem of grant management from the the, the other grant manager i talked about is from the academic institution side this grant manager i'm talking about from the government side so these are all scientists who also have to also have this idea of promoting science and research across the country in both education institutions at school level right up to post graduate in, uh, education like in institutions like iisc iit and university of delhi all the universities across the country so this is the scientist position within the government then you have the scientist r and d engineers r and d scientist position researcher position in the industry then there is also a big eco space or ecosystem of consulting position so these are uh, mostly comes in consulting firms deloitte boston consulting group lot of companies are there consultants so what they do is uh, to put it very uh, simply and uh, to simply uh, uh, tell it in a very uh, dumb down version if you can say because this is consulting itself is a very big space many organizations uh, niche organizations would want to maybe start a new Uh, vertical in their product space but they are not sure whether they should get into it they want a market analysis done a risk analysis done a scientific risk analysis done etc so then instead of doing it in house they maybe hire a consultant firm to understand okay is it risky for my company to get into this space how much revenue can i generate uh, what are the other do we have a risk of any patent infringements if we come out with a product can you answer all these so the consultant then gets into the job so for the consultant to do this they need experts so that's when a person trained with a phd comes in where they can offer their expertise so that's how you can work as a consultant then uh, these are three verticals i have already talked about which is basically scientists in government organizations industry jobs and consulting and the fourth one which many people are not aware of is in the publishing space so all the big publishers in the world elsevier nature uh wiley can name whatever mdpi all the publishing houses in the world have editorial positions let's say development editor associate development editor associate editor 
these are all positions of basically scientific publishing so they need people with a phd trained manpower to be able to manage trained manpower to be able to manage the inflow of all the manuscripts understand whether this falls under the scope of the manuscript send it out for reviewers so for them to assess where and whether a manuscript merits at least first consideration within that journal scope you need to be trained so that's where phd's really find a role in the publishing space so these are mainly uh, the job roles that one can look for one when one is about to finish a phd basically academic and non academic and within academic you have post doc faculty positions and other lab manager grant manager patent portfolio manager within the non academic space you have scientists at government organizations industry positions consulting positions and as well as in scientific publishing now i said we could talk about which of these roles do you, do they really need a phd does an industry job really need a phd maybe somebody with years of experience can do the job same way by and large to some extent it is correct some roles do not do not really require a phd however a phd hired for that position can bring in a very unique flavor of expertise that can help an organization advance a particular vertical that they are working on uh, i think i can cover this in detail in a later video i think we have already uh, shot a very long uh, session so i'll keep posting about this aspects in my future videos i hope you found uh, this topic interesting and see you in the next video take care and bye bye